te digo la más fácil fue ¿me pide? morning again hope everyone sleep well Is there any questions for yesterday? Questions? Before we start. Ah. Any question? Composition, yesterday, any doubts? Nothing? We can start? Okay. We have one hour and a half, something like that, theory again, and then we go for post-processing. What do you know about colors? What is the colors for you? If you had colors, what is the colors? Eh? Colors are weights. The waves the human eye can, human eye can see. Okay? If we talk now, first of all, we will talk about color spaces. Everybody knows there is RGB. What mean RGB? Red, green, and blue. Okay? If we create, we can create more colors by mixing of them. But look at these three colors. If we add any colors more, we are going to the white. Okay? If you take your torch now, or any source of light, and the beam of light, if you put the beam of light over the red, the color will be white. Yes? If you turn off all the light, the color, which color you can see? Black. So uh, I will ask you a question. This is red or black? Or white? This is the bend of the light. Okay? So when you go to, to the field and take a shot in the sunset, after that you are going back home to post-processing this picture you have to be careful about the color and the light, okay? You cannot put exactly in the horizon, make the color dark red or dark uh, orange or something like that. You have to be careful because there is a lot of light there, so everybody will see this picture, will say it's not... Uh, something wrong in the picture, okay? So it's very important. More light, 
you add, the color will be more brighter. We'll see that after. And if we mix all the colors together, we go to white. RGB system they call additive color system. You have actually two spaces of color which we use. All the TVs, monitors, everything is only can read RGB color. It's the same of the histogram. The histogram you have light and then you have red, green and blue. So all the colors and the light, the range is from 0 to 255. If you go to internet, you are looking for some number, for, for some color, just put in the number because, because every color has three numbers. The red and the green and the blue. So the amount of each one is creating another color. We will see that later also. The question everybody asks, what do we use, RGB or sRGB? What do you think the better? Why? The color is the same. The color is the same. Eh? The space of the color is wider. In RGB, we have three kinds of colors. Pro photo RGB. Anybody heard before about pro photo RGB? Or someone used it before? Here we have spaces, color space. The only way you can work with pro photo RGB is changing the Photoshop. The only way. Our cameras only work with Adobe RGB or sRGB. Okay? But the pro photo only here in the, in the Photoshop but the file will be so big okay, because we are creating, getting all the spaces of the color. So th the picture will be so big. And after that, we have the Adobe RGB. You can see it's smaller than ProPhoto and bigger of the sRGB. So that's why if you want to set your camera, always go for RGB. Monitors, TVs, everything only read in sRGB because it's smaller and less data we need. The other space is CMYK, where we use CMYK only. And if we have the, the RGB, we have the scale from 0 to 255. Here we have percent. The portion is percent. We have to add, for example, 30% of yellow. And with magenta only 20, 
with 40% cyan, we can create some green maybe color. Okay, so it's only percent, and only we use it in the printing. More colors you add, it's the opposite of RGB. You are getting black. Because here we are not working with light. RGB is waves of light. Here is different. The uh, TMYK is the art of the reflected light. So the reflected light, if you close this light, turn off all the light, the colors will be black, okay? So because this is reflected light, it's not, but the light always will be, finally will be black, N never black, only in the night, okay? Because there is no source of light, but, but if there is any source of light, it will be different color depend the, 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 the light. This is what we need to learn very well, the wheel of color for processing. For the scientific, they said the red and yellow and blue, this is the primary color, not the green. If we add these three colors together, we are getting another three secondary colors. Yellow, blue, and red, we are getting three more colors. And if we add together the six colors, we will get another six. So we have actually 12 colors. Okay, this is every two is one, two, three, four, five, six. 11 and 12 colors, okay? This is what they call the color wheel. And we have the cool colors, and we have the warm colors. Always the warm colors, we can see in front, in the same area of the sun, okay? During the sunset, sunrise, this is what we call the golden hour, and the opposite side, you can see these colors. And, and the blue hour, only you get blue. But this is always you can see in the opposite side of the sun. Okay? So, each photographer could have his own uh, personality. If you go to my profile, you'll see 70% of my pictures is cool color. I like this color. Maybe 20 or 15% only warm color. When I plan my shooting, I go to opposite side of the sunset. The place which is for the sunrise or sunset, which, which is for the sunrise and going in the sunset. And, and the opposite, if I go to the side for the sunset, I go in sunrise because I like this color. This is your personality. You have to show it. Many people said, we know your colors, we know your work. When we see the pictures, we know this is for you, okay? Because they already know my style, my colors, the processing we, I use. So this everything together, creating your personality. Today I will teach you how to process, but this is only the guide. After that, you should make your way. Not use the same way I use, because they said, they will, everybody will say, this is not your, it happened. Now we'll talk the color theory and landscape. If 
color theory, uh, the technique of combination of many specific colors in the way you create harmony in the picture by mixing some colors together. There is a lot of types of the color theory. This is the first one. The analogous. That means we will take a group of colors that slide directly. You can choose these two colors together, or these two colors together, or these together, or these together. Something like that. Okay, I choose these two colors here. Only blue and something red here. OK, there is some yellow. But the, the, the more space is for blue and magenta. The other, the second one is the complementary. So we take two colors. That's why directly cross. Any two colors you can see. I will show you after that in Photoshop where we can find this color wheel. You can keep it open and work on that. This is a sample of the same two colors. When you see these pictures, if the colors is lying together or uh, making harmony together, your eyes will feel uh, calm. You know that? Even with this one. You will enjoy seeing these pictures because the colors making harmony. The light also the same, the composition, everything all together. When we go for the site, we are making composition of the elements. But also we, we have to compose the light and the colors also. After when we go for post-processing, we process first the composition, second the light, and third the color. We are not going to process I little light here and here. No, no. We have to go in good direction. We have three steps in between. We have to make all these steps one by one. The third one is the split complementary. Taken two colors, light directly, adjacent, okay? And then you choose any color of the, any another color. So we can take these two with this one, or with this one, with this one. So, no problem. Like this, this picture. I take the blue and the green, flying together, okay, with the red in this picture. Number four, this is monochrome. Everybody knows that. The same color but different range of light. Okay, like this one, so all the same, okay, but different light. The 
last one we have this triadic combining any three colors equal faces. We have 120 degrees, 120 degrees, and 120 degrees here. Any three colors, you can see. I don't know if you, someone uh, making light painting photography. Light painting. You have to be careful of this. You have this picture. Forget about the light here. You have blue, you have green. Okay? We have blue and green. You have to choose another color, color gel, because if you are painting, you have gel of color. You have to choose the color well, according with this. Thank you. I have a question here uh, that uh, this color that you chose for the hut, uh, did you manipulate it during post-processing or was it no, no, yellow no. you made it red or you found it red? No, no, I used gel over the, the, the flash. Okay. I was inside. Ah, okay. Lighting. And supposing you were just capturing naturally and exactly. not, not the making any capturing. change. Yeah. Okay. It's night time. I walk, okay, I make the, the color inside, I go back again, take the torch and light a little. Something like two minute exposure. So there is a lot of time to do everything. Or you could have done it in post processing also. No, 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 no. No? No, no, no. It's okay. low filter. Okay. So it's very important to, to know this techniques, color techniques. We can go again for YouTube. I don't know if there is some, some video on YouTube because it's not so famous that it's not so famous. But some photographers, there is Ted Gore, which I, I think is the first one who, who start to speaking about this for landscape photography. American photographer, really amazing mixing color. And here we have dyed colors. We take two colors separated, keeping the color between. Okay, so you can take this one here, just any two colors, keeping the color between. Like this one, we have blue, everything blue, and we have the red. This, all these colors is post-processing, okay, in the Photoshop after. I choose the color, I change the, the white balance in the Photoshop, because I want the colors to match in together, I want to create a harmony, okay. It's a blue during the during the blue hour, almost the end of the golden hour and the the starting of the, the blue hour. So we have some golden hour still here and we have the blue hour here. Any question? Questions? I know it's a uh, something new for you. You back again to the internet and tell us about the color theory for landscape photography. And also you have the video, it's recorded live. You can back again to the video. Let's talk about brightness and saturation. The single color itself and has two directions. 
light and saturation, correct? More light, less saturation. Less light, more saturation. Very important. When you add light, should be the color less saturated. During the sunset, if we back again to this picture, here it's orange, okay? But here, almost white. Why? Because of the brightness. Brightness, okay? So when you process your picture, be careful of that. The area of the sun always should be brighter of the edges. Okay? The same here. Here we have the reflection of the light. Should be brighter than the foreground here. Okay? If we make, we cut the color wheel, we will find this. I think everyone is familiar with this one, right? Everyone here? So here we have white, pure white, because this is the source of light, okay? Less light, more saturation. And this, the same. If the light going less, we'll get black color. So this is the brightness. This is the saturation. Okay. Very important during the post-processing to know all this. Very important. This is what we are familiar with. See, this is the pure black, white, and here we have the black. Less light, more saturated. Sorry, more light. Less light saturated, and the brightness is black after that. And here, if you want to search any color, there is some specific website. For uh, they will give you the three numbers of each color. You want a gold color. Here you cannot find the gold color. Okay, it's very difficult. Go for this website. I will, I will give you someone. And you can get this, this three color, RGB color. Okay? And this is the CMYK for the printer. You have to get this color. You need 10% cyan. 64 magenta and 100% yellow. Okay? That's why they say landscape photography is the most difficult type of photography. That's it. Because we are not controlling anything. We don't have any control about light, we don't have any control about colors, we don't have any control about composition. But we can use Photoshop to get some something under control. Also, this is very important before post-processing to know, should never push the saturation over the entire object. Because as you know, there is different light over the object. So we should not 
full saturated. The second, don't make any alteration in the brightness and saturation with color. Okay? Keep I an RGB histogram. The same in, in the light. We should keep I and the histogram, light histogram. Here the same, the RGB histogram. Okay? And pay attention of the dominate color because this is the harmony of your picture. Any question? Everything's okay? Or we still skipping? Excuse me. Yeah. Can we can we depend solely on our eyes, or does it have to be like going back to the manual and uh, no, you, making you sure? Can, you can. Like can we just look through to the monitor and no, do everything? No, you can depend in your eyes. Actually, huh? you you can. Sure. Yeah, I've never done this. I know I'm I'm not uh, I'm not uh, uh, perfect as 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 any you, you one might be, but. Uh, but just this, this is the way. Uh, okay. uh, just a, um, a question. So can so can we do that? Yes, sure. You can do. You can. But to be perfect, better to go Any use this way. Better All to of learn us we all. start only guiding by our eyes. Okay. okay. But then when you learn. The techniques of color will be different. This, this small thing, I think, they are making the difference between amateur photographer and pro photographer. Okay. And it's accepted in uh, international awards. Yeah, sure. Like changing hues sure. and saturation, and everything. Yeah, sure. It's saturation, brightness. Everything is accepted, and uh, there's no limits to it. You, you, you'll see after we will make some pictures, okay? And you will see how we change. I will give you techniques in Photoshop. We only change the color, one color. If you have you have these pictures, I will show you how to change. Only this color. Only this. Okay? If you want this, how you change this? One by one. Because if you have the light here, this one should be brightened on the top. Okay? You will learn all these techniques. In uh, process. And, and colors can be changed dramatically? Yes. Yeah, no, automatically, no. Not uh, dramatically? Yes, you can. Like we can change any color to any color, any other color? Mm, no. We're not put here green color. So oh, okay, so that's what, because I'm right. not, I don't know how to Photoshop. No, but you, I don't you know can the, change the, the software. The color, you can saturate the color, okay? You can make more brighter. Right, but we cannot okay. change it. No, the color okay. we should not. But here, if you have blue, and you don't like the blue, your 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 personality is warm. You like the warm color, so we can change the white balance. Okay. This to warmer. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can change from uh, warm colors to uh, this cold water. Okay, called the uh, colors. So you can change in between, just changing the white balance from 2,000 to 10,000, 2,500 to 10,000. You can change any 
tone of color, okay? But changing from warm to cold, nothing else. As we know, the light is the crucial element in the photography. And we need this light to be perfect in our photos. Do you think at 12 o'clock noon we can do some landscape photography? Why? Too bright. Here. In, in the Gulf country. But if you go to Iceland, in midday, you can. Why? But what's changing between UAE and Iceland? The sun here is 90 degrees over your head. But there its maximum is 25 degrees over the horizon. So you can easily make picture getting the the graduate filter for the sun, so it's easy. So the light faces, everything about light is depend of the sun in our landscape photography. So the light faces depending of the location of the sun. This is very important to plan your picture. This is the, the light stages, stages of the sunset. We have late warm. We have soothing, this is late warm, sunset, civil twilight, nautical twilight, astronomical twilight, and then the night. And the same here. Start again from night, astronomical, nautical, civil, twilight, sunrise, and the golden hour, what we call after. Okay? This is the stages of the light. Depend what you are going to photograph. So you have to choose in between. If you are astrophotographer, you have to go for night. If you like only night landscape photographer, you have in between nautical, civil and nautical only, because then there is no light anymore. This is the elevation of the sun. This is the golden hour. It's from six degrees, the sun over the horizon to minus four degrees. This is almost 30 minutes, 35, 30 minutes. Then we have the blue hour. It's only two degrees, something like 10 minutes, nothing more. Then we have nautical, astronomical, and night. So if you want to shoot only landscape, this is your perfect time. You have one hour to make photography. That's why I told you yesterday, you have to go two hours before to the site, look to the composition, and uh, choose your picture. First of all, do the picture normally without any kind of light, just for to, to, to make the composition better and then wait till the light. The twilight and magic hours, as we see, happening in the morning and the evening also. But this is, doesn't mean the same condition of light are repeated. Because the dust humidity, and also if there is any clouds or something like that. This is changing everything, the condition of light, especially here. The 
twilight. The time intervals happening between night and day. Before sunrise, sunrise and after sunrise, sunset. When the sun is between 18 degrees below and zero degrees of elevation. This is the twilight, the severely and the nautical and astronomical. It's between zero and 18 degrees. And the morning also the same, okay? It's between minus six, because in minus six, starting the golden hour in the morning. In this picture of NASA, we can see the twilight perfectly. Day, golden hour, you see the color changing here. Okay, then we have the blue hour. We have the civil twilight here. Nautical, it's more softer. Then we have night. This is the timing of our photography. From here, here, almost one hour. Any question? We start with the civil twilight. During the civil twilight, still enough natural color there, okay? Because we have the golden hour still here, and we have the blue hour also in the civil twilight. The sky is very bright, and the color, you'll see the color of cloud, very saturated. So and the color will be orange, red, and yellow during this stage. That depends on the weather condition and the particle of suspension, the dust particle of suspension, because we change the color. This is during civil twilight. Okay, you can see the color here. It's red, and for sure. This is also red because this is lavender. That's why I prefer always the, this time to, to photograph the lavender field because almost the same color, matching, the colors matching. You can, you can see this is monochrome, okay? Because it's the same color but different grade of the color. This is also civil twilight. We have the red, yellow colors in the sky. Also here, the reflection of the colors. And it's very important for post-processing As you know, we have RGB color, correct? The opposite color of the red with the opposite. Yeah. Okay. The opposite of the green, Zenda. And the opposite of the blue, So, if you have here blue, you never can get here green in the light scale. We have here yellow, correct? You go up, catching blue. If you process your picture, don't change the color the opposite. You should always keep 
in your mind, the opposite of the yellow, it's a blue. If you are changing the white balance of the sum area and the pixel, be careful about this. Also, this is in the civil twilight, but in the end of the civil twilight, okay? Because we have still warm colors in the sky, but it's almost blue. He says it's the border between the golden hour and the blue hour. It's really amazing if you make your picture at that time. There is a lot of application can tell you exactly what time will be the golden hour, what time will be the blue hour. So you planning your sunset or sunrise, depends the, the time. And this is the best time for landscape photography. For me and for 90% of photographers. After that, we go for nautical twilight. It's exactly when the sun is more than six degrees below the horizon. The sky begins darker, getting darker blue, okay? It's not blue hours, but it's end of the blue hours, it's more dark because less light. So if we have blue hour, then the light is become less, so it will be dark blue. It's perfect for landscape photography, for lens closure. Because this time you can get easy 30 second shutter speed, easily. So you can make some long exposure without filter. The morning nautical twilight begin when the center of the sun is minus 12. because we have only six degrees, okay? But the afternoon is starting when the, the center of the sun is minus six to minus 12, okay? This is during the nautical twilight. It's darker blue and we start to see some stars and planets. The brighter stars we can see it at that time. Only the brighter stars. No Milky Way, nothing else. Only planet and brighter sky. This is the North Star here. You know, it's so bright. After that, the astronomical twilight starting when the sun is minus 12 after sun, sunset, sunrise, sunset, and starting from minus 18 and the sun before sunrise, okay? So the sky become more darker, large number of constellations become visible, okay? Stars, and you start to see the Milky Way, but we still not so strong. And it's still good time for long exposure photography. And you can do in night, 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 night photography taken like down the moon face. It's very important for long exposure or for night photography, the moon faces. This is during the astronomical twilight become more darker and the Milky Way is still not so strong. Okay, we have still some light coming from the sun. This is astronomical twilight. So it's it's nice to to try all this timing, you know. Because the pictures are totally different. For Milky Way, I prefer always this time because uh, 
I like to, to have very nice foreground. So this time, if you, you still can do pictures with F8, something like that, but maybe you are going for two minutes or three minutes, okay? And you make another picture for the sky, for high is higher thought to get the start point. This is the nice. I get some light here from from the car. Was far away the, the from us, but this is the night time. No light, no colors coming from the, from the sun because it, it's not visible anymore. The sun at this time, and this is the perfect time for astrophotography and for uh, Milky Way for some. Uh, Nebula or something like that. It's good time. This is also, this is dark space, uh, deep space photography. It's some old star when when the star dead, creating this effect. Also, it's time for for aurora because it's, it's night. You can do everything. And the same place, but with the moon, moonlight. It was here full moonlight, and the same place. Sorry? The moonlight, yeah. Oh, it's okay. This is See, if you go to the previous picture, yeah. Is it similar time, right? No, it's, it's different. Different. Six months. Different. Ah, okay. Not Not the same day. This is no moonlight. Okay, it was a new new month. The new month. And this is with full moonlight. Pictures are different. Okay, but this is a nice one. Okay, and the other is also but it's not not the same effect you can get. Any question about the twilight? Can you go back to the night picture? This one. How, what was the exposure time here? 15 seconds, I think. Something like that. Because I saw 400. It's because the skies don't seem to, to move. The clouds. Yeah, because you, you can see the stars. It's its point, but uh, it was so uh, windy, so the speed of the wind it, uh, was amazing, really, this day. Yeah, it is strange that the, the clouds were not, uh, yeah, it's not making trail. It's a small trail, if you can small. see. Yeah. Ah, okay. There are small trails here, hmm. but it, uh, it was so windy, really. Okay. It's just 15 minutes. You can, uh, if you see the stars, you know how many yeah. seconds the picture yeah. is. Yeah. Because more than 20 seconds, you will get star trail, yeah. small star trail. Okay. Thank you. This is the panoramic picture. Yeah. This is panoramic. Yeah. I usually make three or two workshops in Iceland yearly. What about magic hour? This is, yeah. We have golden hour and the blue hour. Okay. The golden hour is the period of time the sky goes from red to orange and yellow, golden tones, having a warm color temperature. Okay. But if you go to the opposite side, it's called Color temperature. Okay, so I told you before, it depends of you. What depends your personality really? If you are uh, in action always, or you are very uh, quiet. Okay. If you are very quiet, you are going to the 
cold temperature, you are very active, you go for warm. Okay? Doesn't produce strong shadows. This is what we want. It was yesterday in the field, I told you, it's so, the, 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 the shadow is so strong, we cannot do anything because there is no detail in the picture. And it's ideal for landscape photography. The morning, morning golden hour begins when the temperature of the sun is minus four degrees because from minus six to minus four, it's the blue hour. And ending in the six degrees over the horizon. And the opposite in the afternoon, starting from six degrees to minus four. This is the golden hour. Unfortunately, and last year, one guy did this place. One Iraqi guy dead here. The Saying how we can measure the degree of the sun, uh, can we convert it to time? Like, for example, 20 minutes after the sunrise and 20 minutes before the sunrise? You have a lot of program. You have a lot of program in your mobile. The best one, the photo peels call. Photo peels. Spanish guy creating this. This is the most famous photo. And also you have one application called Magic Hour, I think, Golden Hour. Yeah, you have a lot of application. Sorry? One. It's a single row. My question was, was this multiple? Uh, no, this is one single row. Because I told you yesterday how to compensate the dynamic range of the picture. We have two ways, using GND filter or multiple exposure, exposure blending. So here I use the GND reverse filter for the sky and ND3 f-stop for the foreground, because I want this effect it was around two seconds, I think, only the exposure time. Okay. So this is the golden hour. <coughs> this also golden hour. You can see it's so strong the color. And the blue hour as we say, starting half and 20 minutes after sunset and 20 minutes starting before sunrise. No, half an hour before sunrise. During the blue hour, the sky is deep blue. As we say, we see after, before in the photo of the NASA. I don't know why it happened. I'm not physician. The color temperature become cold because the opposite of the warm color, I told you, is the cold color. Okay, so I think this is why we have the blue hour after. This is the opposite side of the the cold hour, and the colors become from blue to orange. Near the horizon will be orange color, 
and the, all the pixels will be blue. Like this, you can see. Still have some, it's a blue hour, but due to the clouds we have here, we have some magenta. And this also, it's blue hour. You can see some warm color here, but all the sky is deep blue. Any question? Yes. Saying, uh, to get this amazing pictures, should we have the face of sun? Should we face the sun? Which picture? One more. There. So the sun here, it's beh behind of the mountain, or? Uh, the sun is already already down it's four, but four we have, degrees we have to face it in our camera right no the sun is something like this ah, but, yeah. but for example uh, if the sun here comes and if we right side we will not get this colors right yeah. Mm. Yeah. the sun Sorry, this is the sunrise. The sun is, is behind. Okay, but still you have something there. This one, sun is here. Look the color. Okay, you still have, I think, almost more than uh, 90 degrees. You still have one color. It's it's always you have 180 degrees warm color and 180 degrees cold color. You see the wheel, and also the same. The opposite side of the sun is cold color, and the the place of the sun is warm color. It's almost 120 degrees, 90 degrees for each side. What if we have a, uh, like, uh, a nice position, but the sun is behind of us? Like yesterday, the picture I showed you. If you have the sun behind you, you have everything flat in front of you. And that's why we shoot always the sun is 90 degrees right or left from us. Why? To get shadow. If the sun in front of you or 90 degrees left or right, you still have shadows here, okay? This is how create the third dimension of the picture, the shadow. The dynamic range, the shadow, the light, everything creating the dimension of the picture. Because to create three dimension of this bottle, now you see two dimension, no? But you have one light here and you can create the third dimension of the picture, so the same. Always you have to get the color, the, 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 the light beside the subject. If you have the sun on the back side, you have everything flat. Everything flat. And yesterday you see that in the field. In the front of the, in the, the, front of the sun was everything flat. There is no shadow there because we only see the brighter area. The, the shadow area, we cannot see it. So this is, that's why we, we shoot our landscape pictures when the sun is in front of us, 180 degrees in front of us. Okay, right, left, or in front of us, but always near the horizon, the horizon, okay? I have a question. Yesterday, while I was taking photos in that uh, place, I was having a problem of the shadows of the tripod. Yeah. The so because that was a big problem to me. So uh, how we can override this problem? Yeah, that's why the sun is yeah. behind you. Yeah. 
So, but the shadows of the people also so passing by. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so you, you cannot remove it. If the shadow is this soft, in Photoshop you can remove it. But it's so strong, you cannot. That's why we shoot our pictures during these magic hours. Okay, because the, the shadow is very soft. Sorry? Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Any more questions? Wait, uh. So you were saying that uh, you, f you like the cold colors. Yes. How would you do it cold in here if you were about to take this picture? The cold colors keep the sun behind. Not behind you, behind you. Uh, where I live exactly in, in Spain, we have the sea in the north, okay? Sunrise in the west, in the east, and the sunset in the west, okay? I shoot always the same, always to the north, okay? It's just little move from the north, okay? If I have the sun, sunrise from here, okay? I'm shooting this way, okay? If the sun set is here, I'm shooting here. So the sun, it's not behind me. It's maybe more than 120 degrees in my left. So I start get, you, you can see here, so the sun here in the middle, but I have some pictures. Here was the sun here, but you can see starting to get magenta in this place, but it's still maybe more than 90 degrees here. You have the opposite cold color, but this is the warm color, okay? And here you have the cold one. But here you have warm color. Here what, where I play normally. I, I never play in this area. I play all, always in the corner. So this is my favorite area to work. I never shoot directly here. I moved 120 degrees here. Question, we can get break. Wait. That last picture was also a single exposure? This, this one. This, this one. one? Yeah, this is also oh, a this single is exposure blending. We said yesterday, if we have mountains, something like that, we have to go to exposure blending. I'm not sure if you uh, choose this one for some, uh, exactly, I don't know if they accept it. But yes, they can accept it because you, you, you send the dark picture for them. Because uh, I remember someone told me, a lot of people send very dark pictures, okay? They don't send the, the, the brighter one because the brighter one, maybe it's overexposed in this place. So they send the darker one and, and easily it will be accepted. I don't know. <laughs> More questions? Just show us a picture of uh, the mountain. Uh, what kind of lens have you used there? I always use 24, the uh, 14, 24. Okay. So I'm using 20, 14 normally. Even for panorama, I'm using 14 millimeters. <coughs> Thank you. You're welcome. 
Anything else? Never used that. Not used uh, for large capital. Mm, I don't think so. No, because we don't have uh, high buildings there or high mountains. Till 14 millimeters, you can catch everything. But maybe you should make panorama pictures. This one, no, this is single. This was very difficult to get all the mountain in the lens because I was so close to the mountain, okay? And also for the aurora ring to catch the reflection, the world reflection, so should be panorama. But this picture is just two second exposure, 3,200 ISO, because the aurora changing so quickly. It's not like the Milky Way, the aurora is moving, dancing in the sky. So now it's here, after maybe here, something like that. So you have to make quickly shots. If, if it's over us, but sometimes you have the aurora there. There is no detail for the aurora. Here we have detail, but there we don't have any detail. So you can go for long exposure, 100 ISO, and for 30 seconds or for 20 seconds, that's normal. So you have to choose the right time also to make panorama. Also, if there is clouds moving quickly, you should go for fast time. Yeah. No. Yes. Uh, my question here: when you use, when you shoot uh, panorama, and then you have moving atmosphere around you, like uh, the aurora or the cloud. Yeah. Uh, when you combine the no, the photos together. It doesn't show the crack of the mm. of the different photos. The crack only showing during the processing, the merging of the pictures. Yes. But yes. when you accept everything and you blend everything together, it will disappear. Because like, to yeah, like this one or like the other one, the mm, one no, the no. night shot which you no, put, uh, the because cloud was was quick shot. Fine, but the clouds also, the, the other one. Moved, yeah. Yes, at night you shot with clouds. Yes. That is panorama, right? Yes. So, uh, because, you know, when you shoot panorama, you need time to, to shift from one exactly. frame to another frame. Exactly. That's why you have some motion blur here. Okay. You have motion blur here. And each one is 30, 20 seconds almost, right? This 15 seconds, each one. <coughs> 15, okay, 15 seconds, and 15 yes. seconds, and another 15 seconds. Exactly. So you have three shots. Exactly. And the clouds are moving. Exactly. You won't see the seam uh, exactly. attaching the other one? Good question. You know how we made before long exposure pictures and creating the motion blur picture without filter? Mike, uh, it says that we don't have the filter. We Without filter. Without filter, yeah. For filter, we can just uh, take continuous uh, shots, Shot. and then uh, we can merge them or break them in the in the Photoshop together, and then we will get more. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's merging. Maybe more than 20 or 30 pictures or 100 pictures to create the motion blur effect without filter. But now nobody are doing this technique because it's not so, it's not costly. It's costly time, costly. And then you have to process it. Processing is very difficult. It's not to make 
put all the picture together in Photoshop and you blend everything together. It's not, you have to make percentage of each one. So the first picture, 100% percent, the percentage. The second one should be 70, the third one 50, and you are going down, so you are creating this motion blur. It's, it's really it's difficult, the processing of these pictures. But we can do it without filters, okay? But you are going to spend it with this picture to create motion blur. You need one minute, for example. In the other way, maybe you need two hours doing the same picture. Because one minute, uh, uh, not for, for night time, for daytime, maybe you need 100 pictures, every picture <coughs> half second or something like that. So you need a lot of pictures to do it. That's why you have some motion blur here in the cloud, because we are, this is different pictures, maybe one minute and a half in between, from here to here, okay? So that's why you have the cloud right here. How many frames are there in this particular thing? Six frames. What about the aura? Even for aura? No, this is nine frames. Because it's wider, the angle is wider. Okay. You want to catch the aurora from, from edge to edge. More question? Take break half an, half an hour. Okay, drink coffee because now we have the strong part of the workshop.
bir soru, soru sen de. الاديتنج الفيديو راح اعمله هلا راح راح سجل والفيديو راح يكون عن راح يرسلوا لكم اللينك وانتم تحملوا من اللينك انا كل ورشاتي الفيديو بيكون مأمن للجميع يعني على حقكم صراحه Photoshop. Hello, Photoshop. لا لا أنا على حد الآن مهندس أنا أنا هاي التصوير عندي هوبي بس. لا. في بسيط يعني من خلال ورشات يطلع عم بعمل ورشة عندي. بدي غير كاميرا بدي غير كذا الان لحد الان شغال ميكانيكال انجينير هوايه احلى شيء الهوايه Ready? You remember yesterday we talked about exposure blending? We should talk, take one picture for the shadows area, okay? And the second one for the highlights area to protect our highlights area and our shadows area. And then we blend all to get the final result. Okay? Let's do now this exposure blending in Photoshop. Fantasia. Eh? Um, Sensation. Start recording. Okay. We have these two pictures. Okay, this is for the highlights area. You can see here everything's okay. And this is for our shadow. You can see the shadow. It's good. So we we select all. Actually I'm not using Camaro Row for anything. Okay. And not Lightroom. Nothing I use. Okay. I'm, I'm sending the video now. Okay. And we open both pictures. Okay. No. We will do it after. So this is, we have the dark picture, and here we have the, the bright one. We choose the dark picture, we select, we select all, OK? 
okay? Or you go to Command A and copy the picture from editing, we copy or Command C, and then we go to the bright picture and we paste the picture. But Command V, okay? This is two pictures we have. So, what we have to do in this picture? Here we have the brightness, okay? We have to select what we are going to select. The highlight, okay? So, we dis disable the other picture, only we are going to work now with this one. We go to select the color band and we are going to choose the highlight because we are going to change the highlight. Press OK. Then we activate this layer. So here we have the highlight selected. If now we take layer mask, so the darkest area in the image will be replaced with the bright one. But we have some problem. You see, nothing matching. There is two ways to do that. First one, we go to filter, blur, we go to Gaussian blur, and we choose the amount 1000, and we press OK, and voila. Or Double click over the, the mask. We go to property, and then the feather, we put it in 1000. It's the same of Gaussian blur. Now we have everything is OK. Easy, no? That's 20 seconds. OK, we can create some curve, but only over the sky. OK, by activating this icon here, this layer will be only working over the lower layer. And then go down, and our picture perfect. Small job you have to do, just 20 seconds, half minute. If you spend more than 10 minutes processing your picture, the picture is, there is something wrong in the picture. Perfect, basically. We, we go for that later. Okay? Any question? I was sorry. Okay. We put the both pictures together, okay? <coughs> the brighter one first and then the darker one. So we are going to replace the highlight from the first picture, from this one. So we go to select color range, and we select here the highlight. First of all, you see the sampled color. Just press one click here and go down to the highlight. And then press OK. Don't change any value here, keep everything as. And then it's already select the highlight area, just enable this picture, click, and then create mask, layer mask. Double click over the mask, the feeder to the end. And 
after that you can create a curve but you are going we, we need only to for the highlights you know so for this icon if you press this icon so everything you do over this layer only and finish here you can see we have nice highlight we have nice shadow and everything picture everything is okay okay I stop the recording في two layers blending mode على اليمين on the right side right أو عند normal or kind يمكن فوق عند ال kind where kind يمكن ما blending mode blending mode normal can we like select two layers and uh, I'm asking, is there any blending mode that we can just click on two layers and Photoshop does it instantaneously? Yes, sure. Without going through the whole process? Yeah, sure. Like joining. Here you have it. One click. What's, what was the name? It's just action. Huh? Action. You, you record your steps and creating your steps by action. Just recording your steps. No, no, uh, that wasn't my question. Yeah, you go here for... No, my question was uh, the blending mode. No, 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 the, no, no way. No way. The blending you mode. You know where you blend two layers? No, no. There is no way of no. getting the same result from the auto previously saved uh, no, blending no. modes okay like luminosity like screen like lighten darken whatever always when you have high dynamic range picture picture only if you have high dynamic range yes even in seascape you cityscape you can use it so you don't recommend uh, bracketing no. through Nikon uh, bracketing uh, no. technique? No. There is uh, for cityscape, I'm not going through that, but يعني no HDR ها no HDR هيدا no HDR it ruins the image I think right show you something yeah it uh, especially on the edges This is exposure blending, but this is multiple shots. This is more than seven shots. Okay. I'm actually 
uh, create this exposure blending by myself. And the original was this way to do this way. I start as cityscape photographer. I don't like prof two. I like the foreground pictures. So it's different way of blending. It's not HDR. It's not anything. I'm not using any program. It's handmade, hundred percent, using using the same technique. But it's, we have seven pictures in here because we have lot of source of light. We don't have any direct light here. We have artificial light, but we have light coming from here, light coming from here, light coming from here. We have a lot of source of light in this picture, so we have to take more than one picture. Okay? This is not our uh, Oh, any question? question about yeah, this? Yeah, I have a question on this. Yeah. So how do we know that <coughs> uh, we are getting the best exposure? Like usually we're taking two photos, right? Yes. What can I do? Like I'll take uh, one picture. I start from the zero, for example. Then I go one stop no. behind. So how do I know that the highlights are, are like whatever I have taken is, is the right photo? Histogram. You have the histogram here. Showing you the highlight is okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So it should be the like I take the shadows and I'll take the highlights. Exactly. This one and then this one, the other. Okay. The histogram is perfect for the mm -hmm. okay. for the shadow. And after the processing, the end picture. It's perfectly. We have highlights. We have, if you go here. And we need to we do also shadows, some modification. We have highlights, right? but it's very smooth, the highlights we have. And then we have mid tone. Mm -hmm. So we have everything in this picture. But the histogram will be also uh, adjusted also with the brightness, saturation, right? Yeah, we will work after. Okay. So this that. will change also. It yes, will go a bit exactly. uh, more smooth. Exactly. Okay, let's take another example. This you will like more, this example. This is will be great example. <coughs> Here we have two pictures. Okay? One is before sunset and the other one is during the blue hour very complicated to get during the blue hour uh, perfect picture you know for especially in cityscape because you have a uh, lot of sources of light okay you can create many pictures so but i show you one way to do it with just two pictures actually we need to do this picture maybe six or seven but here we are going just for two now. So we select all and open images. And we do the same. We take the darker one and 
we place here over the writer. The same we go, we select the highlight and replace. Also the same for the feeder. Okay. But as you see in this picture, there's nothing matching. The colors, the light, nothing. So we have to change everything. First of all, the white balance is not matching. So we have the foreground is almost white and the sky almost blue and we have light. So that means this is night photography. This is after the blue hour. But should be everything blue. In this case, in the background, we take this adjustment, this color balance, we decrease. We, we take a little for the blue, just a little. And now, better, correct? But you see the tower here, it's so dark, it would be brighter. Again, over the same the background we have here, take curve, just sweep up. Okay, something like that. Only we are going to work in over the tower. Then this layer we inverted by clicking Shift and I, Control I. Okay, Command I in Mac and Control I in, in PC. And with the blue brush, with the white brush, sorry, 100% and the flow 50% only. So just painting over the tower. Everything is recorded, so you come back again to the video. Now it looks different, correct? More 100% better. And the sky, it's a it's li little dark from... You can also take a curve and sweep it up a little and activate this. So oh, almost the picture is ready. Okay. You see how many time we spend? One minute? No need to spend more time. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, we have artificial light. So Sorry. In, the, in this case, we have the light from from the lamp yeah, on, the, on the street. Okay, one minute. Okay. Yeah, we have the those lights here. Yeah. Yes. And then usually it's supposed to be on the foreground down some reflection or some no because this is blue hour during the blue hour we still have light from the sky from the sun okay so never if you go to the the original picture here there is <coughs> smooth light here but because this is so dark, but it, if you make it brighter, you will not see anything. No, because the timing. I told you it's very important to choose your time. If it's night photography, it's different, will be different. But this is how to mix blue hour photo with before sunset 
photo to get, to get all the details in the foreground. You can use it here in Dubai frequency, uh, this technique. But uh, if you don't mind, uh, could you just uh, like explain us in the case we want to add a little bit of the of this yellow light on the on the on the street down? In you want what light on the street down? Yes, yes. Just a if you want, you, you should choose the second picture, not before sunset. Get just get the exposure time more. So the same time, okay, but more exposure time, only for the foreground, okay? So in this case, you have to make photo for the foreground, the same before, and one, the another picture for the two hours. For, t for cityscape, I recommend for you only shooting during the blue hour. It's the best time to shoot the cityscape. Thank you. Okay. What do you think? It's easy, difficult? Easy way? Good. Now we are uh, we, we are going now to work in some pictures. <coughs> after, after. Eh? No, what I was saying, Yanni, because usually like any uh, any niche or any uh, industry, you learn a lot, but you get the butter of it. You know, I'm, I'm going to what I, I search what I need only. I'm trying because uh, I like to do the everything is well, you know. Yeah. I search for how to create the dynamic, good right dy dynamic lens, search for everything separately and I create many things by myself, okay? Yeah, yeah it's a learning process, Yanni. Yeah. Exactly, it's just trying. Trying and going through the... Day by day, day by day, day by day, you are learning. Many, many people ask me, why you give your videos? Nobody give the videos, processing videos in the workshop. You, know, you should to learn, everybody. I, I, I never pay to learn. <coughs> And you should never pay to learn. We have to share our knowledge. Sometimes you, you, you said any, some, some techniques I never had before this. So you share your knowledge with me. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you. Really appreciate it. This, uh, this way. Thank you. Now we are going to process just one single row picture. OK, let me. Take this one. Yeah. Yeah, it's row five. Okay. We are going to process this picture. This picture was taken one month back or maybe six weeks back, I remember, in Spain. Just 40 minutes driving from my home. 
was raining all the way, and suddenly the sky opened in this area, and the load, the tide was perfect, okay? The colors perfect, everything, but this is only one single shot. If you go to histogram, we have the height, the, the, the shadow is okay, starting from the edge, and the, the highlight is okay. Because, but we don't have mid-tones, okay? But this is what we call high dynamic range. This is not blending, it's one shot, and how we process this one. First of all, we are going to recompensate the picture. Because if you see, the edges here is empty, okay? Here it's okay. Also here it's not so good for me, okay? We have to make the composition again, because sometimes it's very difficult to do it. I cannot stay little on the left because the water is half meter. I'm staying here over the small rock, something like that, to make the picture. And working just maybe 100 meter water rocks, something like that, it's very dangerous with the tripod. Uh, really dangerous sometimes to make cityscape or uh, seascape. So first, if you are looking here in this area, exactly in this area, we can shift this area to the right, to the left, and nothing will change in the picture. So if I select now, from here to here, with control T, I can shift it. You see? Nothing changed. Or I can skew it also. You see? Nothing changed in my picture. So it's, it's re really so hard to create very good compost the picture in the field. Sometimes it's very hard to do it. But with just click, we already do it here. So now the water is going from the edge, okay? With just seconds. But you have to know how to do it. And now I think you know. To create this, we back again. Just try to use the roller here. If you don't have the roller here, just go for window and click on, no, sorry, for view and click on roller. Try to be in, in good place. But imagine you don't have, you cannot change here the, so it's really very easy also. Just control T or you go to layer, uh, sorry, to edit, transform, and scale, and then you can, you can take this to the right a little, okay, take this like this, Q in here a little, I 
I don't know. Uh, I think yes. You are not changing. Crop is, is accepted. Yeah, but it, it's the same if you if you go to the crop tool. The answer, I think, yes. No, the, the same pixel, but you are fetching the pixel. No, no. Nothing you are going to reduce. Okay, so this is. Now we finish the composition. Okay. Now we have the water starting from the edge. Okay. The mountain, this rock is exactly in the third, first third of the picture in the middle, and the water are guiding us to the rock. Okay. So this is the first step. The second step, the light. This is before, but this is after. You see, it's totally different. What about the light? We have shadows, and we have a bright area. Let's work first for the shadows. You can take curve, lift it up. Now you have the details, everything. Now it looks good, no? The foreground. Take graduate filter and this from black to then you sweep it from up and down. You see, only we increase the shadow. So this area is more brighter and we have starting, we start to get to mid-tones here. But it's little bit flat now, the foreground. We have to create, shad not shadows, dynamic range, little, the dynamic range should be okay, little bit okay. And the highlight area, it's so bright for me, okay? So, if you go to select, okay? Color range, we go for highlight, okay? And now you can change this scale. Now we have all the sky selected. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Now we have all the sky selected. Let's select it all. We use the quick selection tool, okay? And just take care and go down. Okay? If you go to channel now, we have the selection area of the sky and the, the, the channel. Just clicking on this channel with this icon we will create the selection again. 
we go to RGB and then layer to select and we inverse the selection. Maybe a little complicated for you, but it's the video is recorded. Sorry, it's not. Again. Again, no worry. Okay, now, starting now. Okay. We create another uh, layer, okay? Control G, another layer. First of all, we are going to compose our picture. In this case, we have if we move, you see, if we move this one to the right, to the left, nothing changed in the upper side layer, okay? Upper side of the picture. So with Control T, we just shift it a little to this cube. And now we have good picture. We are going to select the sky. We go for select, color range for the highlight. Okay. And we click OK. Then with the magic uh, select tool, we just select all. OK, we remove this. Now we have sky selected. We go for layer, for the curve, and sweeping the curve down a little. Now we have the sky. We go for the channels, for the selected sky, and we click this icon to select the sky. Back again to the RGB channel and to the layer, and we invert it. From the selection, we invert the selection. So now we select the foreground. The same thing with the curve, little up. Now. You see, we have mid-tones. We have highlight well. This is the highlight perfectly. We have the highlight. And also the shadow perfectly. But this picture is a little bit flat. So now we have, we, we, we have to change. We have to create something called dodge and burn. You heard about it. But I will touch, touch you now a new way to do it. It's a little bit complicated, but it's 100% better of the normal way. If you go there for this tool, touch and burn tools, this is because you are going to touch all the picture and burn all the picture together. So we are going to select a new layer from this icon, clicking change the layer to overlay and then creating mask. We go to image, apply image, and we don't change anything here and we press OK. Then with Alt and if you click over the mask, you will see the selection. This is the area what we have in the mask, okay? 
So we want to the white color to be more white. This is the dutch process, should be more bright. So over the mask with command L, this is the level. If we want to increase the, the brighter area, we sweep this one to the left. And now this is the area where we are going to work only the brighter area. This area, no, because it's not white. Clicking again in the layer with the brush, white, and opacity 20%. And then we are going Something I click here, no problem. See? Before and after. And also if you want to the sky, make it brighter, but the sky, don't touch it, it's okay. Okay? So now we have, if you go to, look to the histogram. It was before more mid-tone area, and now, sorry. And now we have more brighter area, okay? But at least we fix this one. We will process uh, now one picture from you, from yesterday, to do the same. What about the dark area? We do the same process. Actually, I record action about this. It's very easy to record. Just you go here, new action, okay? And you put your name, the name of the action, and then you record the action, the, same, the steps what you are going to do. So after that, you don't have to go again to create a layer and the mask and go to image, apply image. So just clicking over the, the burn layer and, and play. And you will get the same exactly. OK? So what about the next one? We have to burn our black area, <coughs> new layer, overlay, and mask. And we go to apply image. From image, apply image. But now we invert it. Now, OK. So this is what we select. The white area is black, OK? And the black area is white, actually. But we have to, the, white, the black area should be m more darker. Now we sep separate the white area and the black area, the channels separate little. The black is white actually, and we are not going to touch anything in this area. So we go again to the, to the brush, but with the black color. If you go to the sky, nothing changing, okay? So if you, only here, look, you can play with the brush any place, but only you are going to dark the black area. And this is after. Now the contrast is very good in the picture. If we go back again to this layer, to the, the Dutch one down, If we choose the red color of the sky and we burn little this area, you see, we 
we have some areas there is more reflection from the, from the sky, even the color of the water to create the dry, to be dramatic, more dramatic. But just once, you know, now look, it looks better. Okay? Any question about that jump in? You have the video, you can back again step by step, and you can record it, make an action or something, or just make it once and one. Now I think we finish from the composition and the light. Now we have the color, okay? If we click then command and click by the area, okay? So you can create group command G and this group you call light. So you know this is the before and after, you see? Now we got going for the colors. I always work with the empty layer here. What color we are going to change now? Let's make the red one is more stronger. Okay. Go to select <coughs> color range, but we are going to template color and we click over the red. You have to lower this one. Here you can control only the red color in the picture. You see? Here we have red only in the picture. Something like that. If we click OK, and we go now to curve. In the curve we have RGB, and then we have red, green, blue and we work with the red one. If we increase this up, it's going more red, you see? We take it down, it's cyan. So, more red, more dramatic, the picture. And this is finish. This is before and after. We only select one color, nothing else. No need to select all the picture and make saturation over all the picture, no, just in specific area. Nothing changes here. If you want the blue color here to be more lighter or more stronger, the same, go to select color range and go to the blue one. You see here now we have the area where is the blue. You can smaller the area. For me, it's enough like this. And you can use any adjustment layer of this. You can go directly for saturation. Or you want to change the white balance of the, of the blue. Well, you go for that. This is more blue. But this blue, it's, it's more cyan because it's the opposite of the red. Okay, you go with this one. You want more red? You see, it's more red. This is how you change the color, one by one. And really, it's very easy, and it's accurate. You are shifting, not uh, shifting the edge of color. When you finish the select the color, I always double click and reduce the feather to 250. So now the area between the two colors, it's blurred. So there is no any uh, shifting the color of the edge of this area by blurring this much. Now the blue is more blue. We make the same <coughs> over the curve to 
250 over the red, and the shifting from the other color to this color, it, it's very smooth. Okay. I think the picture is ready, something like that. But now, many people ask me how you get your picture is uh, like a brightening or uh, like metallic bright in your picture. This is the end result by merging all the layer. This is our end layer. Okay. Stain. I use Nick Software Collection with Color Effect Pro. Actually, I use only three filters of this collection. The first one is the tonal contrast. Is creating smooth contrast in the picture. You have the video, so for the sorry, this is all in the Spanish, but no problem. The light here is an eight, the mid tone nine, and the shadow in eight, and the saturation is zero. And this is before and after. See. Smooth contra contrast now add to the picture. The next filter I use is a skylight filter, especially for sunset and sunrise. Look before and after. More warm, giving more warmer color to the picture. You can add more or, you see, and less, it depends what you like. And the last filter is the pro contrast. For dynamic contrast, I give something like 18. And on the top, something like 12. And this is before and after. And the final result. This is the final result. This is before and after. And, and this, this is the way how to create this metallic effect in my pictures. So far, right? Yeah. Uh, really, I never print my pictures. <laughs> I have only one or two, but I'm, I'm Never print, but then you get you have to change the image mode to CMYK. Okay, you have to blend, flatten. Okay, and here now you have to work over the CMYK because now the picture, the printer only used the CMYK, not RGB. So you are going to make any arrangement of the color over the CMYK. If you go to adjustment right now to, l to the curve, we don't have RGB anymore here. We have C, M, Y, and black. Okay, if you go to cyan here, we have now the cyan to the top, and we have the red to the down, just the opposite of RGB, as I said before, OK? So here you have to adjust your colors and everything. Any questions? We'll stop the recording. Yes. Mm, I, I will back again just one minute. Uh, 
this is the this is the end picture, okay? This is almost 300 percent. There is no noise in the picture. Why? I never work over the row five. I never work over the row five. This is the main picture. And all of this is empty layer. If you remove these pictures, it's nothing here. Only what we paint. So we are not modifying any raw file. The raw file is still the same. We are just building over the raw file. It's like Lego. You can remove it any time you want. The other question, when you want to post it, what do you usually do settings for website or... For posted, uh, as we said before, the monitor, what color they, they manage, what the profile of color they use, sRGB, okay? So we have to, for Facebook, for the website, for everything, you have to Keep it, save it like sRGB. And you go to file and save. Exp in export, you go save for wave. And then <coughs> you keep in RGB because here only RGB or give. This is the RGB, uh, this is JPEG. It's sRGB, okay, the quality maximum, and you choose here the image size. Normally, I choose 2,000, something like that. Yeah. 2,048 or 2,000 is, is the same. And now you save it and, and finish. Now you can use it. When you save this one in your mobile and you see the laptop, it's the same color exactly. Nothing changed if you save it as, as sRGB because our device only see sRGB. Okay, I always save the pictures. <coughs> PSD like this, I never flood the picture. I keep it like this. If, if one day I have to change, make any changing, so it's very easy to get back again and change. And you make one picture, save it like sRGB for the website and, and nothing. Any questions? Okay, now it's working. Okay, uh, you said you you don't use uh, nothing to reduce noise or something if like that. If there this. is noise for night pictures, I show you some example. Okay. Let's see this Aurora, okay. If you go here, you'll see some noise. But this picture was done three thousand I think. Three thousand two hundred ISO. Okay, you have for this camera. It's, it's not not noise really, because but still you have something. Okay, but this is now we are in three hundred percent. I have one filter here called noise wear reduction. Noise wear reduction. Noise wear. Okay, and here. You can change the weak noise, the landscape, nightscape, it's removing all the noise. It's uh, see. 
Now you move. But really, there is of course no noise in the picture because it's good. Oh, too much work over this picture should be. Too much work. But uh, not not so much really. Yeah, this is night. Only you have only uh, you have a lot of shadows area, and you have mid tone, and you have here highlight of the aurora. Okay. I need one picture from you guys. Uh, just we have uh, 15 minutes, and then. Never use it. I'm not fan of Lightroom. No, experience only. Exactly. Okay. Let's go to this picture. Uh, Shadi. I have a question, please. Uh, you said you never use uh, Lightroom uh, on raw files. You said uh, you, you never work on uh, raw files, yeah. and you keep it, uh, working on different layers. Yes. Does working uh, on a raw file, let's say uh, using Lightroom, does this create noise when you work? Yeah, when, when you modify it in Lightroom, the, the original uh, raw file, you are changing everything inside. So you will create more noise if you change the, you will create in noise and uh, abrasion color, something like that, if you change any color, because the mixing, when you mix the colors in together, maybe you, you create some chromatic abrasion in the edges or something like that. So if you modify the, the colors, as I told you before, and then making blur the, the, the layer, the, the color will shift smoothly in between. So there is no modification. And still, the raw file, your raw file, it's, it's uh, intact. intact. You never touch it. OK, we'll take these two pictures. This is a good example to learn how to remove people from the sense. Okay. Okay. We select both from here. Select all and open. And the darker area, the darker photo is selected over these photos. And now we go to, as I told you, I, I record my steps. We just go to blending and start. And here we have the result. OK? You can make this, but it looks nice like this. This is the picture. For me, I don't like to be the main subject of the picture taken more than third part of the picture. This is too much for me. So you can adjust it and crop it.
for me more better. What do you think? Okay. First of all, you have to check the whole sign. Look, it's not straight. We have a lot of way to do it. If you press here, we have the ruler tool, okay? We take line from here. And then we press take a line. Ah sorry, because we are working over the map. Now it's straight, okay? But for me, I prefer Command T, okay? Take the ruler here, and with this Q, even if you go edit, transform to this Q, Now it's straight. Okay. The second, we should give the foreground is just one third. Okay. Here we have empty space up. We don't need any empty space. So, Command T also. Something like that. before and after okay now we have to remove these two guys I don't know who is with lasso tool okay we make selection around and double uh, right click we put skill we don't, no need to change, only content aware, everything. And then it's magic. And you go to the other guy and doing the same. And now everything is okay. But still in this picture, we don't have contrast, if you see. The same. As I have recorded everything. We go for burn layer, for dodge one, sorry. Play. And now, this is only for the black, darker area. So we, we increase the, the dark, just to make the separation. <coughs> Okay, something like that. Back again to the our picture. With the black brush at 20%. Even if you go to the brighter area, nothing changed here. Now we have contrast, a little bit here. Now it looks better, correct? I think a little bit here. And now it's okay. 
it's nice to get this uh, over exposure here. Really, I like it. And we can increase it, even. We can increase it. We are selecting the li lighting area. If you go to select the highlight, color range, the highlight. We need only the sky. OK, forget it. Go to the magic brush and make selection to the sky. You can go back. You will see it's, it's good because the contrast is uh, big, so you can select it well. And then you go to select and mask. Here you can see if you have any bad selection. This, this is what they use for portrait to select the hair of the woman. So now we can take a little bit the brush and mask again in this area. You can see how it's now better selected. Okay, and now we change the radius to 10 pixel, and our selection is perfect. You can save the selection, always keep the selection saved. Put here the sky. If you want to do every, anything after that, so you have the sky selected. Then <coughs> let's take a new layer. We go to layer, a new one. We change the opacity, the, the mode to overlay, and we fill it with 50% gray. So this is neutral density layer. Over this mask, over this layer, we choose the brush, and we change the color to the, the sky color. And we're starting to paint in here. You can see, we're starting getting some paint here and starting again. And let's give some beams of light. Uh, Sorry, it's not selected here. But if you remove the selection, keep it in 10%, and you can give some beams of light to this area. Here, never, because this is the opposite of the sun, so be more darker. And this is before and after. This is how we add the highlight to our picture because your eye is going directly to the sun, to the light. Even if you don't have any sun in the picture, you can create it by using this technique. And let's select again the sky, always over the layer. We select. We load selection, and we go to sky. It's the same if you go to channel and you press here. It's the same. Just I want to show you another technique. And now we invert. We take curve a little bit darker because it could be dark this area. There is high dynamic range in this picture. So could be this one, the histogram here perfect like this. This the light what, which we add in our picture. So now the light is perfect in the picture. We can add now, starting with the color, I will change the color uh, balance, little bit red. And 
a little bit magenta. What do you think? Different. Okay. Now everything is, is finished. Only we have to add the filters. This is the NIC software. You go to filters, NIC collection, color effect pro. It's free, all free. You can download from the website. And this is the tonal contrast, which I add. We add another filter. We go for skylight. And now it looks fantastic. See? Another filter, we go for pro contrast, little dynamic contrast. Finish. See? This is before. before and after. Thank you. Perfect. cannot see anything. No. No, this line was before. This line was before. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Can I have a copy of this? I will keep it with all the steps, okay? And also save it at SRGV for you. Okay, one question. No, I, we, I will show you some techniques, but, uh, okay. but this is against HIPAA method. How to add clouds to the picture. If we have these pictures first, uh, it depends, it's recorded, but I don't think they like that. <laughs> so we'll stop recording. We have this picture, we select the sky. We already select the sky here. Okay. We already selected. So we have to go to some skies in the sun, sunset. We, we, we look for something we have. Yes. Exactly.
It's definitely scandalous, eh? We have these two pictures. Uh, is that a duck? <coughs> what sucker is that a duck? Anyway? A light. Light sucker. Okay. Light thing. But but they attend that. But they are out of. I mean, we can see that they are. بال processing ما بدي عشان يقولوا إنه غير سما وحط سما وكذا وهالشغلات عادي عادي يدخل إيه أوكي لا بس إن نسألوني إنه كيف إذا فينا نغير سما أو كذا عادي آه إذا أوكي خليها أنا بس مشان مشانكم خل أوكي 